So guys, welcome back. 19th of June today and we're going to look at uh, fruit thinning. It's something that's necessary. Uh, so I'm just going to show you what I do. So on this cluster here, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to thin that down to two. Now, that might seem a bit drastic, but it's all about balance. Um, you can leave three, you can leave four on, you can leave them all on. Um, but you have to bear in mind that the more fruits you leave on, you're putting more stress on the tree you, to use up its resources on making those fruits. So, what I do is just thin them out and leave two on. Something else I just want to, if I can get the camera in, bear with me. Might be difficult to get a shot of this, but the This fruit, this one here, is kind of at the middle. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it's got a much thicker stalk on it. So that's this is the king fruit, and usually you would remove that because it won't store as well as the ones around it. That's the reason. So again, my advice: always remove the king fruit if you're looking to store your fruit. So I'll just thin them out and then we'll just do the same process around the tree so yeah see what I mean it's got like a thick stalk on it if we compare that to say that one this one here maybe see the difference much thicker stalk on this is the king fruit, yeah. I've got a bucket as well, I'm not just leaving them on the floor. And then I would leave, usually I'd try and leave um, two opposite ones or something like that. So I'll take that one out. Right, so I'll get on and do the tree, bring you back. Okay, so that's the fruit I've removed. I say they're in a bucket because I'm going to give them to my neighbour's hens, they like to peck at them. And it's good practice anyway to pick them up because you don't know if there's grubs inside. So it's better to clean them up really. The only other observation about this tree I suppose, uh, this is Spalier, you uh, can see with all the leaves there's been a lot of problems with aphid damage. Although the tree, this new growth, you know, it's kind of recovered. But here. But I'm not bothered really because, to be honest, soon we'll be, uh, in another few weeks, I'll be summer pruning it. So all those growths will be cut off anyway. Along with the aphids will go along with them. So that's uh, another job we need to do in a few weeks' time. So we've had some warm nights. And one, two, three, four. There's 13 moths in there, I think we just counted. So they're definitely around this coddling moth, and the trap's working really well. So they've had one spray with the BTK, um, and it's dry this tomorrow, the well, next three days. Got some rain coming today, so I'm going to try and spray them again over the weekend. And again, just on this tree, if you look at this cluster here little fruit like that's going to drop off. See how easy that just came off, that one. So sometimes you don't even really need to, the tree will do it itself because the June drop isn't quite finished but it's easy really to sort of see that one there just going to drop off. Put this three on there so I'll have to take one off. Anyway, right, I'll get on and do this tree. So there's not a huge crop on it but it's still something we need to do. Okay so that's that tree done and I've pulled those to one side. This one, that's probably a codling moth. You usually tell by the brown frass and there's a kind of little hole there. 
So again, you don't want to, uh, that, that's never going to store. That can go to the hens. And this sort of thing where you get scab. Again, that's not going to store, so reject those. I'm going to go and have a look and do some uh, thinning of the on the plum tree. So just looking under the tree, I don't know if you can make that out on the lawn there, there's small fruits that's dropped down. That's the June drop still taking place and all down the path there you can see them. But if we uh, look at a branch or two, taking this one here, one, two, three, it's got four and then you see the difference. You see how they're going to fall, they just, they're just coming off. So with that one, I'm not going to take, you know, that's fine, I'm just going to leave those as they are. I'll try and find a better example. So on this branch, this is a Victoria plum by the way, you, um, you see the weight, this branch is just hanging now, It's the, the weight of the fruit is pulling this branch down, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, because I'd rather have them coming down it makes more fruit buds but that is going to need a lot of fruit removing so uh, hold the camera there for a few seconds you can take a look at it and then we'll come back once I thin the fruit out okay so that's <coughs> the branch now oh that's focusing in an idea of just a few branches I've done there just trying to space them out pitch it and I've got a tarpaulin down to help me uh, collect so as I say that's just an idea of the amount of uh, fruit that this tree is carrying this year I've only done a fraction of the branches but I'm gonna again bucket them all up and uh, the hens can have a play with them. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. I'm going to crack on and get this tree done and then we've got all the rest to do down the plot and on the micro orchard. So it'll keep me busy all weekend, no doubt. Catch you later. So I just wanted to show you, I've pretty much finished it. There might be an odd little branch too. Rain, rain's coming in now, so I've had two, two of these two gallon buckets full. And then all those on the tarp and everything I've got to pick up, so that's how much fruit I've taken off. But if you look at the... That's the kind of spacing. And I can go back in again if need be and take more out if necessary. So, just wanted you to see that. Hope that was helpful. Catch you later. That's the uh, 22nd of June, summer solstice been and gone. I just wanted to show you a quick uh, clip of this bud grafted standard rose. So, the, the yellow rose was or is um, what we bought and uh, I pop, popped a, a bug graft in here you sort of see there and uh, yeah I think that's a fabulous rose that I'm not sure I think it's actually taken off this rose here I think uh, it's probably come off there that one but it's a lovely rose and I'm well chuffed about that really chuffed so what I want to try and do possibly is put another type in maybe a pink one or a peach rose or something like that and then we'll have uh, three different colours on anyway just wanted to show you that it's coming on to rain so I'll catch you later bye for now 
So just got back from the plot, uh, soft fruit harvest. So my first harvest of uh, red currants, and uh, these are raspberries, summer fruit and raspberries. Here we've got Logan berries, two nice bundles of rhubarb, and then this manch, these manch two are the first picking of the second row. I staggered the sowing, so again I've managed to achieve a really nice. Uh, what what's the word? I don't know. Transition from the first row, sort of ending now, to the, the second row. Um, just really starting to throw out some nice pods. So that's really good. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, share that with you. Catch you later.